provoking extraordinary miracles. How do I make extraordinary miracles to happen in my life? When situations look uh, bleak, when there seems to be no hope, how do I make things happen? How do I work hard miracles? How do I cause a miracle to happen in my situation? When things look hopeless, how do I make things happen? You know, we said on Friday that all miracles are extraordinary. We said all miracles are extraordinary. But, but some are uniquely extraordinary, you would put it so. All miracles are, you know, extraordinary. But once in a while, God performs some miracles that are truly out of the ordinary. You know, once in a while, God performs miracles that are truly out of the ordinary. And I'm trusting God that God will do some exciting, miraculous things in your life in the name of Jesus. We said a, a miracle is an undeniable manifestation of the power of God. Something that we cannot deny, that this can only happen because God is involved. Hallelujah. We said a miracle is an undeniable manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And God's glory is the is beauty, is fullness. You will see his glory in the name of Jesus. The glory that will wipe away every shame, every struggle. Hallelujah. You be a candidate of experiencing that kind of miracle in the name of Jesus. So provoking extraordinary miracles, Isaiah 8 verse 18. Isaiah 8 verse 18. It says, Yeah, I'm high. Yeah, I'm high, and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion, from Chapel of Grace, you and I are for signs and wonders. You'll be a sign and a wonder to your world in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in this season of miracles, make me a wonder to my world in the name of Jesus. So, a miracle is an extraordinary event, something that is out of the ordinary, an extraordinary event that is not explainable by natural or scientific laws. Something that something that natural and scientific laws cannot explain. That is a miracle. For instance, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you now, how do you now say a, a stammer, I thought I would be a pastor. Someone like myself. As a big stammerer. Now God will not push that kind of person to be pastoring, to be talking every day. It can only be God. <laughs> Amen. That alone, what? It's a miracle. Whereby of all the jobs, everything you want to do in life, that that is the kind of job that God will not push you into. Something that natural laws or scientific laws cannot explain. What eyes have not seen, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, what ears have not heard, what men have not thought of, he will do for you. Because he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a miracle is an extraordinary event that is not explainable by natural or scientific laws. Miracles don't happen on their own. Miracles don't happen on their own. You have to provoke them. You have to make them to happen first. John 5 verse 4 says for everyone that is born of God for 
everyone that is born of God overcomes this world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Now give me that in the message translation. Everyone born of God, you can overcome the challenges of this world. That is the reality. Every God begotten person, every God begotten person can conquer this world. So, no matter the challenges, no matter the prejudice of life, as long as you are a child of God, you can conquer this world. No matter how the how they come, how big, how complex, how complicated the troubles come your way. You can conquer. Amen. Anna had a trouble. She was going to Chilo. And at some point, she was deliberate with her persistence. She conquered the world. Luke 18, 1 says, Luke 18, 1 says, men and women should pray always. Jesus told a story that it is necessary that you pray consistently. Give us the, the New King James Version. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Women always ought to pray and not faint. And that lady, the parable there, she caught what she wanted. The story of the persistent woman. Hallelujah. You will have your own miracle. You will make your miracle to happen in the name of Jesus. Nobody goes to the shopping mall to buy a championship bet. No. What do they do? They face battles. You face battles. And when you've conquered, then you receive your belt. You will conquer battles. I've shared here that there are simple troubles. There are complex troubles and there are complicated troubles. The more you face the trouble, the more you, you, the more you ignite the trouble. May God give you the capacity to conquer all kinds of troubles. Psalm 34 verse 18, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. Many. Not the unrighteous, the righteous one. You will have many troubles. Tell somebody, be ready for many troubles. Hey, hallelujah, you can't take it. Tell another person, be ready. Build capacity for many troubles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of trouble, then your faith is weak. You would faint. You would faint. If you are faint, it will wake you up. You will wake you up and you will face the trouble. That fainting is a liar. You just want to escape the trouble. If you are fainting, it will wake you up. Face the trouble. Don't faint. It's not time to faint. Tell somebody, it's not time to faint. So wake up and face the trouble. Hallelujah. Am I preaching good? Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Provoking extraordinary Miracles. That means you will have extraordinary troubles. No, you can't take it. If you want extraordinary miracles, that means you, you will have some kind of compound, complicated troubles. You don't know how to approach the trouble. And that is where God comes in. In the season that he has promised us extraordinary miracles, somehow, suddenly, it will take Everything like Jesus woke up from that sleep. Peace be still. Why not decree and declare, peace be still. Every storm troubling me, peace be still. Peace be still. Now speak that over your finances. Speak that over your career. Speak that over your marriage. Speak that over your immigration challenges, whatever be it. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, things you have to do to provoke miracle. Number one, seize the moment. Seize every moment that comes your way. Seize the moment. Three things then we are done. They may have sub A, B, C, D. Seize the day. When the trouble comes, rise up. 
don't go to the corner and start weeping and crying. It's time for God to show up. Anytime trouble comes, it's an indication that God is about to do a miracle for the child of God. Because Romans 8 verse 28 says, everything, Romans 8 28, everything will work together for your good. We quote it, we, all of us, everything, even the trouble will work together. Give me Romans 8, give me the simpler version. Um, the message translation. Message translation. Romans 8, 28. So everything, even the trouble will turn around. And we know, message translation, that's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Everything, everything, the trouble is part of what God will use. Amen. For him to manifest himself in your life. No trouble, no miracle. No what? No trouble, no miracle. That means it's natural. You're already enjoying life. So what is the miracle again? Amen. No trouble, what? So when there is a trouble, that means a miracle is just around the corner. Hallelujah. Anytime there is a trouble, that means a miracle is just around what? The corner. Then why do you, when you're expecting a miracle, when the miracle is around the corner, you rejoice to receive it. Hallelujah. A miracle is just around. Anytime there is trouble, anytime there's a big trouble, then there's a big what? Miracle. The, when, 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 when we, we, God gave us a word some years ago, 20, over 20 years ago, 18, 19 years ago, that the bigger the problem, the bigger the, the testimony. Hallelujah. I've, I've shared that yet several times. If you, if you know that story. We were to get married. We were to get married. We were to get married here in Bradford. And we were to get married. We've done invitation cards. Hired hall. Done everything. Wedding dress. Family has booked holidays. Everything has been done. Everything. Waiting. Started marriage counseling uh, programs, whatever. Three weeks to the wedding. Okay, you have to go to the registry to inform the government that you are marrying their daughter. All right? Went to the registry and they said, you need Apple, you need a certificate of approval before you can marry our daughter. You have to apply to the home office and that can, that will take 13 weeks at the fastest for that, for it to be approved. 13 weeks. And we have three weeks. Family has booked their flights from Australia, from across nations, from home nations, across the world. And you have what? Three weeks. The bigger the problem, the bigger what? The testimony. We cried, yes. We went to the word of God. Jeremiah 32, 27. Be, behold, I'm the Lord. Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? He gave us a word, Luke 18, 27. If I'm right. Luke 18, 27. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. You want a miracle? Usher in the big troubles. He gave us a word. John 14, 27. And he gave us separately. When the trouble came, we said, okay, honey, you go and pray. I will go and pray. Choose three scriptures. You bring three scriptures. Then we'll stand on the word of God. But we know, according to Psalm 119, verse 116, uphold me according unto thy word that I may live. And let me not, 
are shade of my hope. So she brought three scriptures. I brought three scriptures. And they were all the same from the Bible. May God give you a word in your day of trouble. Final scripture, John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Do not do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Receive peace. Peace be still. In your own situation. In the name of Jesus. I know you guys like stories. You want me to continue. I have a message to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. But here we were, we just, in that midst of standing on God's word, I went to, I was looking for a word, a prophetic word beyond the Bible. I needed a prophetic word. And in those days, the Holy Ghost service that is held across nations was not in YouTube. There was no YouTube era. It wasn't a YouTube era. This was 2004, 2005. YouTube came around August 2005. This was early January. If you know very well, that means I'm not of, of your age for most of you. Amen. It wasn't the YouTube era. There was no YouTube. <laughs> so, but in those days, they will transcribe the, the message on the website. The, the, the Holy Ghost service from let somebody shout hallelujah. Everything is transcribed. So I went to read and to about sometimes 100 pages. I was reading Holy Ghost services, past and present. I was looking for a word that can, 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 can encourage me to stand. And I came across the word. The bigger the problem. Someone says, yeah, the bigger your problem, the bigger will be your testimony. I say, yeah, this, my problem is big, very big. Very big. And I must testify what? Very big. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I stood on that word. The bigger the struggle then I will have an extraordinary miracle. If you would like to be too much. Hallelujah. So number one, seize the moment. So we stood on that word. So Lord, you will do it. Three days to the wedding, to cost to the short. Praying and all that, God showed to me. Around 2 a.m. in the night. A general Vasey, Pastor E. Adeboye, showing up in my sleep, in my dream. And he asked, Oh, Apple, you've been requesting for something. Please, he asked the secretary, Please bring the fax message, that fax that came for Apple. And he took. Okay, now you're the secretary. So, he so gave him that fax message. So he gave it to him. And he handed over the fax message to me in my sleep. And I woke up. Those were the days of fact messages, not uh, phone, uh, what's up? And he gave it to me. And I woke up in my sleep around 2 a.m. 2 a.m. And I was expecting this letter from the home office. I had only three weeks window for my wedding. But they said the minimum is what? 13 weeks. 2 a.m. I ran down to the door where there's any post. 2 a.m. When troubles come, you'll be, you'll be what? Your, all your PhDs will be nothing. You'll behave as if you don't know anything in life. 2 a.m. I, I went to the door. I said, there's a delivery at midnight. No post at midnight. Waited by 10 a.m. in the morning. No post. More two days to wedding. Thursday. No post. Family has come. My family has come. My sister has come from Australia. My friends have come from across the world. Friday, no letter from home office. Saturday, no letter. Wedding time, we went. Say, I went. You will go. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm summarizing now. For those that know the story, go and listen to all our messages. We get the full story. We went. All St. Church there. As we stood there. My house, everybody has left Ash Groove, Ash Groove here, University, Copeland University. All my flatmates have gone. They've, they've, the Reverend Father has joined. Every, one of, all of us has gone to the church for the wedding. My friend came, man, he was from Milton Kings, one of the 
groom's men. Am I right? He came early in the morning to have my shaver. They went to clean up his hair. And he's gone to clean up and coming back so I can come to, to the wedding hall. As he came back to my house, everyone has gone and he saw a DHL man at the door. So please, I've got a parcel for our book and you must sign it. Somebody but must sign it. And he said, okay. He now signed what he didn't know was inside. And from there, he came to the wedding hall and this was the certificate of approval from the home office. Seize the moment. Hallelujah. God is an on-time God. I was standing, I was standing in the hall. Everyone's happy. They don't know what I'm going through. And yeah, as I was standing, the, my friend came and my friend Chidi, Chidi, he came from South Africa, yeah. He brought the, the parcel. Oh, I, sorry, I came, I'm coming late, but I went, I went back to the house to drop your clipper, but met nobody and I met the DHL man, this is for you. And I opened it and you can see the joy. That day I danced. Hey, today you dance. God will do an extraordinary miracle in your life that nobody will know why you are rejoicing. Hallelujah. Why not jump up and shout hallelujah. 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 Glory. You already calling for your own miracle. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. Provoking extraordinary miracles. Seize the moment. Seize the day. That's my first point. Make the most of the moment. There's no time to waste. Hallelujah. John 2 verse 5. John 2 verse 5. That at that wedding in the king of Galilee. Thank God I started with the wedding story. <laughs> When they had no wine, the mother of Jesus said, whatever he says to you, do it. So what is God telling you to do in that your trouble? Because God is always speaking. He's not silent. In your trouble, he's speaking. He's saying something. For every one of us, as his children, he's saying something to us. So if only you can get yourself to a quiet area, for me, I like going maybe 2 a.m. When I have big troubles, 2 a.m., you will see me all over this, all over Bradford. Knowing not where I'm going. Sometimes I go to the bush, I go to the forest. 4 a.m., I'll just drive to the forest. I'm scared, I'll just go to the forest. Knowing not what I'm going to do, I'll just go there to the forest with the squirrels. Hallelujah. Just in the midst of all that silent, serene environments, we drop something. That woman said, the mother says, whatever he says to you, do it. What is God telling you to do? In your season of extraordinary troubles. <laughs> because extraordinary troubles will yield forth what will provoke what? Miracles. We, hear, we heard about Pastor Holla and <laughs> Pastor Chris. <laughs> extraordinary trouble. God said, what? Give an extraordinary seed. Sow something. It will grow. In your own case, it, will, it won't take uh, nine months or whatever or three months or, or one year to harvest. I will show up on time. There's always a word. There's always a word that God will send to you in your season of troubles. But sometimes, most times, we we are all over the place. Instead of going to listen to God, God, what is the way out? We had our young boy, I'm preaching today, I'm not teaching all that again. Our young boy attacked with cancer, stage four cancer. And God, in the midst of the trouble, God showed, God gave a word to Pastor Andrea, Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 4, if I'm right. Go there, go there. Me that you must, be, you must, you must be Bible students. It talks about even when I pass through the waters, I will not be swallowed. If you don't get the scripture for me, that means I will circle of you. 
He said, he said, even when I go through fire, I will not be burnt. Isaiah what? 43? 2? 2 and what? Okay, let's go. Isaiah what? He said, when, 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. That means there will be no smell of even fire. You want extraordinary miracles? Be ready for what? Extraordinary what? Fire. Hallelujah. And that boy came out. Is he a young boy, the one that said, our youngest one? Three years old. Others, when, 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 no hope, they said it, it won't, it won't walk. They said it won't see. We still have their wheelchair there. We, want them, we didn't want their line to sit down at the wheelchair. Yesterday, I was passing by the place. I told Pastor Andrea, this is where, because she was in the hospital. I told her, this is where we pick the wheelchair. And the wheelchair is still at home. I just said, please, let's take time to come and bring it back to them. Over, over four or five years, we return their wheelchair to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes you see me come and dance here. Oh, Pastor, just want to dance. You see me come and dance here like, uh, that just dance. It's because of the abundance of things that God has done. You see us dancing and dancing and dancing. Amen. And for all of us, God has done so much. Yes. All of us, we all have our own testimonies. All of us, God has done so, so much. We come to church. We now have to push you. I have to beckon on the new. Come and dance before you come. Come, come. I have to hold your hand. Come and dance. I won't hold your hand again. Amen. Hallelujah. Seize the moment. Seize what? The moment. And you will see this good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we did some terrible things that season. Terrible things. We prayed. Intense prayer is required. You pray to generate the Holy Spirit. For Jesus told his disciples, Luke 24, 49. He said, don't do anything. Sit down and pray. Luke 24, 49. Until you are endued with power from on high. This work that is ahead of you, you cannot do anything unless you have what? The Spirit. So you want extraordinary miracles? It's time to tarry in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Tarry, stay there. Stay there. Pray as if all your life is about prayer. You are studying, you are praying. Sometimes when I have deadlines, sometimes I pray more during my examination than, than reading. I don't know why, but sometimes I can't, I will open the the assignment or whatever be it, I'm writing or what deadline be it, if I would know it, I'm praying. I'm doing it. I'm reading. I'm studying the word of God. At some point, the spirit of God will call me back. You have a deadline. You have to submit this or you have to send this across. I'll come back to read. Hallelujah. Intense prayer. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need the word in your season of extraordinary troubles for you to provoke that miracle. If you can seize the moment, all things are possible. If you can seize the moment that you are in trouble, all what? All things are possible. Mark 9 23 says, if you can believe, 
all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. All things. And I mean all things. Hallelujah. All things. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two. Let me jump. Number two. Number two quickly. Points. How to provoke miracles. I put about one, two, three in that first point. Number two. Have a game changer spirit. You want a miracle? Have a game what? Change your spirits. I love football. And, and when I see, <laughs> when, when, when I when analyze games, I see some coaches doing that. They don't give up. Some of you are too young to, for me to take you down there. Have what? A game changer what? Spirit. For those that are a bit older, for those that are lovers, you, you can have it to back. There's a time my host con my country played almost number five in the, in the world in football. They were playing a country called Italy. Italy in this, that was 1994 World Cup. And for all indications, they would have gone ahead. But the coach was rugged. The coach said, I don't mind even though I play with 10 players. But I must what? Destroy some players there. And that was it. They never mind whether they were 10. You must have a strategy. Esther said, if I perish, I will go and see the king. Go and fast. I will fast likewise. Then I will go. Whatever happens, let it what? Happen. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Esther, Esther 4, 16. You have that. David said, who is this what? First Samuel 17, from 31 down. He said, who is this what? Uncircumcised Philistine that has come to defy. He said, this day I will cut off your neck. You must have a game changer spirit. A courageous, bold spirit. The audacity of faith. You must go all out. Rugged. Rugged, radical obedience to God. And before you know it, the thing that you are afraid of will be what? Melting before you even appear. Hallelujah. Have a game changer spirit. Manifest it. Manifest it. Manifest it. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. The Spirit of God. Romans 8, 11 says that same Spirit that lifted up Jesus from the grave, that Spirit dwells in you. You have that same Spirit. If you go down Romans 8, at some point it says, you, know, you are more than a conqueror. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. From 31 down, if you just go down to 37, Romans 8, 37. It said, the troubles will come. Romans 8, 8, 37. Let's go down quickly. Romans 8, okay. You can stay there. Let's go from here. For your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, 37, quickly. Hallelujah. Yet, in all these things, we are what? More than, in all these troubles, we are more than conquerors. 38, hallelujah. Quickly, 38. Amen. Now it says, For I am persuaded that neither what? Death, nor life, nor angels, nor 
principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. 39. Are you working with me? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. That means troubles will come. All kinds of troubles. All kinds of trouble. I'm still waiting for the day I will have a grace to share a particular testimony. <laughs> I don't have the grace now. <laughs> Amen. Some troubles. We're having our last baby. Our last baby. On a Sunday, I will end here. Make the last point. On a Sunday, Sunday morning, went to the hospital. With her. I've been there for all the babies. I've been crying, isn't it? Amen. On a Sunday morning, then all, then baby came. Baby came around 8 a.m. There about 7:30 something or 8 a.m. And the baby. What happened? And I left. Somebody called, oh, it's Sunday morning. Pastor, I'm coming to the house to the, just to get the van. And they were to wheel Pastor Andra to the theater. And they were asking. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling her that I'm going to the house to get van for church, for Sunday service. Meanwhile, they are taking your wife to the what? To the theater. And I went to the house. Gave the person the van key. Go and pick people to church. And I came back to the hospital. When I came back, she was she gone to the theater. I came back. I saw my baby alone in the delivery room. Wife is in the theater. They said, about how many pounds of blood, whatever. Two and a half. Blood. Liter. Two and a half liter of blood. Gone out. Just there. Lifeless. My baby. That was, that was the case. The first testimony was, it came out. And it was, it was, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Have the game changer spirit. I remember screaming that day. Come back to life. Went to my wife in the theater or whatever they brought her to this scene. Look at that. that. That day I came to service. Did everything. Went back. By the time she was coming out. Where am I? Am I am I okay? You've seen heaven. You you will come back from heaven. <laughs> what are you see heaven? <laughs> there is time to see heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want last statement. You have nothing to fear. You have what? You have nothing to fear. Don't don't be afraid. Don't be what? Job said, even though he slay me, I will wait until my change comes. Hallelujah. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. I read this. They said, ordinary people shout for happiness. Extraordinary people shout for joy. Hallelujah. You will shout for joy. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. We are Kataya. Mala Kotoya. I don't know what is your state, but I want you to be courageous in this season of extraordinary miracles. And that you will be rugged to go for what belongs to you in the name of Jesus.